Lancaster Park Christchurch is the scene of the second test. Spinner Stephen Book comes in for Martin Snedden, and Anthony Pygott plays the only test of his career, replacing Neil Foster. Pygott was playing for Wellington at the time, and an injury crisis in the English side led to his selection. New Zealand win the toss and bat first. Willis bowls to right. Willis with quite a stiff breeze behind him, coming over his left shoulder. And this is the first runs for New Zealand. He just whips it off his hip down to a pie got. Willis downwind to right. Oh, and this one's hit him or hit something. He has gone over the keeper's head and it's four buys, in fact. And he goes for the hook and it looks as though he'll get four for the shot. It has gone square enough. I got diving. No, he does magnificently well there. He lost that. To draw it back in, so Wright will just have to be content with three runs. So double figures up for New Zealand. They go on to 11. And it's in both to Wright. A short one, he hooks it, and it's going to be four runs. Marvellous stroke. Oh. Keeping low. John Wright just getting down on it at the last minute. Bruce Edgar, very much the uh, junior partner in this opening partnership. He's facing his Wellington teammate, Pygott. In the air and caught by Randall around the corner. Bruce Edgar is out for one. Pygott has his first test wicket. His Wellington teammate, Bruce Edgar, out, caught Randall at leg gully. And New Zealand are 30 for one. And let's have a look at the movement. There it is, pitching, and he played it, played it in the air, couldn't keep it down, and that man, Randall, completed the job. Cowens. That's a bad ball, and Wright cashes in. Hits it behind point, hitting low on the bat, but it's four runs all the way. And this is caught behind. Wright pushing forward at it taking the outside edge, and so the second New Zealand wicket goes down with a score at 42. That of John Wright for 25, and Norman Cowens in his first over in the second test match takes the valuable wicket of John Wright. This ball from Norman Cowens, if we have another look at it, fairly full at, at pushing forward John Wright, but moving away off the wicket, getting a little outside edge and through to Bob Taylor. It was a good ball from Cowens, it committed John Wright to play, Took the outside edge, Bob Taylor waiting there, made no mistake. That's over the top of slips, that'll do, thank you very much. Howarth, I'll give you credit for that one. He got it short, it was wide, and he just flipped it. Sure, it took a top edge, but he knows there's nobody down there, and you want all you can get. I think it's bowled him. I heard the death rattle it has. It's knocked the off bail off. This one getting Howard to stand up. And so the third New Zealand wicket is down with the score at 53. That of Geoffrey Howard for nine. And Norman Cowan's now having taken two wickets and just in his third over. Let's have another look at it. Just beating the outside edge there. Geoff Howe squaring up a little on that one. Slipped through. Hit, just hit the off stump. Cowens now to Crow. A loud appeal for LBW. And the umpire, Woodward, decides in favour of the batsman. Cowens to Jeff Crow. And off the thick edge, and he's going to get four runs. David Gower couldn't get down to it in the slips. Jeff Crow's off the mark. Both of them. To Martin Crow, it's short, it's hooked, and it's four runs at mid-wicket. 74 for three. Again short, again hooked, and Pygott has got no chance of cutting that one off. It's four more runs. Certainly in both and not particularly impressive this morning. His length has been all over the show, uh, and he hasn't had a great deal of fire either. Normally we expect to see uh, fire from Ian Botham, but here he is, falling to Martin Crow. Martin Crow is out, caught and slipped by Chris Tabaret, New Zealand 87 for four, and that will be lunch on the first day of the second test, with Ian Botham bowling 
little unimpressively, but uh, as Botham so often does, is able to secure a breakthrough with a pretty useful delivery. If you look at this delivery again, you might get some idea of the, uh, the movement, but certainly the bounce there that uh, Botham was able to extract. And the outside edge flying to the right of Chris Tavaray. Goes again, and he gets over the top of it well. It goes square it up to beat Pygott. He, he, he didn't see which way it was going. He stood flat-footed, searching for the line of the ball, and, and it was only some 10 metres away from him. Didn't move a muscle. And so we see from the shot here that Crow, the ball carrying, carrying as far as the umpire on the full, but square enough to beat Pygott. Another one, and this time he'll just possibly get a single. No, he's done Pygott again. He moved the wrong way, but this was a better shot from Crow. He got over the top of it this time and hit it far more crisply. And so the New Zealand 100 comes up with that shot of Jeff Crow. He goes on to 29, and New Zealand now are four down for 100 and 102. Yep. Short, pulled by Coney, probably three runs worth, going out to the mid-wicket boundary, and that's four runs. Yep. Oh, good shot. That will be four runs through points. Norman Cowan's bowling with the southerly wind, or the southeasterly behind him, to Jeff Crow. That's it. And there may be a little bat on this because that ball has uh, really raced away to the boundary. Tony Pye got with a despairing dive in front of the uh, player's entrance down in front of the number one stand. And there was, in fact, uh, a bit of bat on that, and it's four runs. So 133 for four. Cowens. Crow short, hooked square at this time. That certainly is four runs. And Tony Pye got <laughs> doing a great little act there in front of the uh, number one stand. Intimating that perhaps he should dive for that one as well to see if there's any chance of getting it back. Callens to Crow. Confident appeal for an LBW, and that always looked out. So Crow is out for 47, and New Zealand lose their fifth wicket with the score at 137. Jeff Crow playing back, and Norman Cowens has got his third wicket. Let's have a look. Watch the bat. See where he's trying to play the ball, working it on the on side, and you just can't do that to a delivery of that length and line. I got to Hadley. That's a good, strong shot from Hadley. Gave him the width, freed his arms, and he thrashes it through mid off the floor. Hadley gets hold of it. There'll be four runs here. A drop kick just in front of square. And the one that almost pins the short forward leg, but went past his right shoulder. Bouncer, and he hooks this one away over mid wicket. One bounce for four. A very friendly bouncer from both and Hadley puts it away and races to 18, and New Zealand now up to 156. It's in the air, but it's safe. It's four more runs to Hadley, wide of Pygott, an extra cover. Just flicks this one through mid-wicket, that's four more. Effortlessly on this occasion. Yep. This time, Coney hooks and... Tony Pye got a bit slow off the mark again, but he really had no show anyway. Four runs to Jeremy Coney with a good shot. Coney to 26 and New Zealand to 174 for five. Getting to Coney. Yep. Nicely played by Jeremy Coney. Four runs. Oh, that's a nice shot from Richard Hadley. He managed to elude Derek Randall in the covers. Four runs. To 42, and that's the New Zealand 200. New Zealand at 203 for five. Well up, and it's edged to second slip, and Coney is out. It looked so simple. Ian Botham taking the catch at second slip, and the sixth New Zealand wicket falls immediately following T without any addition to the score. 203 now, New Zealand. For six, Jeremy Coney out for 41. Yes, good delivery by Pygott. 
well up to him and just straightening a bit getting the outside edge and straight to that man in both Willis and he hates to cut of course and they don't have a third man which uh, is just not the sort of field that you can afford to bowl to Ian Smith with without a man down there Hadley on 47 he's hit this one over the top will it clear mid off easily and that's four runs didn't appear to really swing into it and so the Hadley 50 comes up Richard Hadley 51 and the New Zealand score now up to 218 for six a wide yeah. one he gets hold of it reasonably well it may not go to four getting after it but he can't pull it in Short one, Hadley pulling. It's in front of square. Going out to the number three stand for four runs. Yep. That's a good shot, Smith. That's four runs. That's better with a full face of the bat. He's flicked this one over the top, though. That's four runs to Hadley. I got trying to tighten his line up to Hadley, but drifting down the leg side, he clips it just in front of square. And so he goes on to 70. And this one's a curious little uh, shot. It'll probably go for four down to long leg. Willis to Hadley. Again, the drop kick, just picking it up off his toes, hitting it over mid-wicket. Big chase for Graham Fowler. He'll bring it in in front of the mid-wicket boundary. In the meantime, they'll complete three runs. Richard Hadley is 79. New Zealand to 258 for six. Bob Willis will continue bowling from the southern end. Willis will move into his 17th over. To Richard Hadley, who's on 80. Again, the drop kick, and again, exquisitely placed over Graham Fowler's head at mid-wicket. But Fowler turns and chases well, and they're going to come back for three. Bold shot by Richard Hadley, and he found the gap, which wasn't very wide, between long off and a deepish extra cover. And Richard Hadley has powered his way to 88. New Zealand at 270 for six. So Hadley 12 runs short of what would be his second test century facing Tony Pygott. And again, he's headed in the air and he's again found a gap which wasn't very wide. This time down behind square on the leg side. And Richard Hadley moves into the 90s. And I suspect for him they're not too nervous 90s today. He's 92 and New Zealand is 274. Oh, a glorious shot from Richard Hadley. One bounce for four. Oh, that's indeed was a stroke of thrilling proportions. Richard Hadley in strike. Just three runs short of his second test century. He's facing the England captain, Bob Willis. What? Oh, comfortably run single here. Yes! In fact, there's going to be overthrows. Hadley will come back for two. Bad backing up. Lax fielding by England. Richard Hadley is 99. New Zealand at 281 for six. Ah! An appeal for a catch behind, and Richard Hadley is out. Oh, what tragedy for Hadley. But nevertheless, what a fabulous innings it's been from this great all rounder today. Richard should never, ever be dissatisfied going out for 99. Um, Sure enough, 100 is nice, but Richard battered the way um, I admire, I admire guys that can bat like that because he, he gives the bowlers a huge chance. Um, he gives himself, I would say, a lot of arm room. He doesn't really stay in front of the wicket, and the shots he played were just magnificent. And for him uh, to get through to 99, you've seen, you know, you've seen a great innings. And whenever Richard batted, I always made sure I was out there watching because he was great to watch. Richard Hadley being dismissed for 99, um, you know, some would say that he had no right to get to 99, but I'd argue that because while a lot of people see him just solely as a fast bowler, he's, he's one of the greatest all-rounders the game's ever seen. And when you put him uh, with Keppel Devi and Botham, I think, um, and Imran Khan, uh, they're probably the, the four best all-rounders of all time. So if it, he hadn't have been the bowler that he was, he could have almost played cricket, uh, test cricket as a batsman. Richard Hadley out for 99, and New Zealand 281 for the loss of seven, and the new batsman is Lance Cairns. It is Botham to Smith. 
Short. Good shot by Ian Smith. Bad ball from both and far too short. Four more runs. Smith is 23. And New Zealand are 291 for seven. And Cairns is out. He becomes the third victim since T. Catch by Bob Taylor. Well taken by the wicket keeper. First slip moved out of the way. And Bob Willis has got another wicket. Lance Cairns is out for two. New Zealand 291 for eight. caught behind just playing away from himself Stephen Bock and he's dismissed with his total on five and New Zealand now 301 for nine and that's a bottom edge it's gone fine enough to be four runs the third man's too wide Alan Lamb and a toe of the bat from Smith takes him to his highest test score now which previously was 29 he goes to 32 Charlie Chatfield is on his way. Willis taking the final wickets. And so New Zealand are all out for 307. Chatfield not able to get off the mark. And Smith left there on 32. Late on day one, New Zealand are dismissed for 307. Hadley top scored with 99. Willis and Cowans bowled well with Botham and Pygott lending handy support. England must see out five overs before stumps. Hadley to Tabaret. Oh, and that one's almost got through and kept very low indeed. Tabaret standing a little bit too tall and rather fortunate to survive that. So at the end of the third over, England are five without loss. That's a pearl. This one much closer in and looked as though it was the other one and yet it seemed to move away off the pitch. Magnificent delivery. Really got him playing, curved into him, straightened, missing the lot. Return to Test cricket takes the wicket of Graham Fowler for only four runs, and so England lose their first wicket. He, he, he looked to play or cover any possible turn, and if anything, the ball just seemed away from him and just clipped the outside of off stump. Book bowls Fowler, and stumps are called. Book will complete the over on day two.